31, I had a question coming out of section 7.1, number 37, and here we were asked to solve this two by two, and it's a little ugly, like a little ugly to look at. I was gonna say uggo, but I don't know if that's still a word. Um, only because of the fractions. So if we want to get rid of the fractions, because this is an equation, I could multiply everything by an LCD. And at least on the first equation, right, I can see that the LCD here is 6. And on the second equation, the LCD is 12. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply every term in that equation by 6 and every term in that equation by 12. And what will happen is doing this, right, it gets rid of the fractions. And I, I actually like fractions, but I think most folks don't, all right? And if you want to get rid of them, and even though I like them, I would, I would probably still get rid of them because I'd sooner work with whole numbers. But if, it, if we get rid of them, then we don't have to worry about it. So I just need to distribute this 6 to every term in here. And I think the most common error is sometimes we forget to do this last distribution. We forget to distribute to the, um, the other side of the equal sign. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to distribute the 12. And when I do that, these are the two equations that I wind up, um, it, they simplify to, or, or I should say multiply to. And then just looking at them, it's up to you what you want to do in terms of when I look at this, and I'll, I'll color code this, I can see that the x's, they have opposite signs, so that's good. But then, oops, excuse me, the y's also have opposite signs, right? They have a, a negative, whoa, where did that go? They have a negative and a positive. So it's up to me what I want to do, like which variable I want to eliminate. Um, but just looking at it, the coefficient in front of y is negative 1. So that seems like a nice one to, to multiply. So I'm now going to multiply this equation by positive 3. Oops, let's see if we can get a little, I don't know what happened there. All right, positive three. And when I do that, you see my work down here. Then all of a sudden, I get my top equation is now 42x minus 3y equaling 36. And you see the y's eliminate. That was by design, but it also turns out everything else eliminates. You arrive at something that is inherently true, right? Zero equals zero. That is an always true statement. And when you get something like that, it means you have a dependent system. Or another way of saying that is you have infinitely many solutions, right? And that's why I say there are infinitely many solutions. So then what you do is you just take that equation, and it doesn't matter which one you take because they are the same equation. I opted to pick that version only because the y, again, it had a nice coefficient of negative 1. I solve for y. So what this is saying is, hey, if you pick an x value, all right, whatever you pick, your y is going to be 14x minus 12, and that will always be a solution, right? It's dependent, and there's going to be infinitely many of them. Because I could pick x being 0, 1, 2, 17, right? Negative 1 half. It doesn't even matter. I could put 0.7. I could put pi in there. And then I'll get my y value based on 14 times that number minus 12. And when I plug that into my original system of equations, and that original system was way back up here, I will get a solution. And there are infinitely many of them because I can pick any x value I want. All right, so that's what we're looking at for number 37. Thanks so much. Bye.